and it's going to jump uh, in brightness um, approximately 100,000 fold uh, to reach roughly the brightness, a little bit brighter probably than Polaris for mm -hmm. a few hours. Uh, and then it'll fade away. And oh, then wow. on a time scale of um, a week or two, you won't see it again. Uh, and you won't see it again for another 80 years. So when I was in the Pacific Northwest, I took a photo of your star. And I don't know if I got to show it to you. Uh, did I? Did I ever show it to you? I think you might Because, you know, there was a chance it could have blown up while I was looking at it. Exactly. And then I'd be the first... To have seen right. it, I, I, or at I, least I, have recorded it. I'd have been it. the first out of the box on that one. Yep. Everyone wants to be the one to, to see, see it. it starting on its rise. Of course. And so people have little charts. Right. And okay, there's T. Corona Borealis. So somebody's and watching this thing every night. Of course. Someone is watching it basically every 24 minute, hours a day. 24-7. Oh, because half the world is dark at any given time. And, and, and we got people everywhere. Of course you do. <laughs> there are tens of thousands of so-called amateur astronomers who are every bit as professional as professional mm -hmm. astronomers. Right. In that community, Go ahead. it is a badge of honor to mm -hmm. say, I am an amateur astronomer. If you say that, you can ask them any question about the night sky and they'll have an answer. They know. Even some of my colleagues wouldn't know because we they know the night sky. They're out there every night, mm. as I was when I was, you know, had my backyard telescope, except right. my rooftop, right? <laughs>